Astro 1.0 released more than a week ago, and it might be the perfect combo with Netlify CMS to easily create, maintain, and update blogs or marketing pages. If you're not familiar with Astro and you're wondering whether you should or should not use it, I'll be coming out with a new video to explain it in more detail, and I'll share a link in the comments, so make sure to check that out. Now without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by getting Astro up and running. For that, we can simply run npm create astro at latest to initialize our astro project with the latest version. We can give our project a name and then select the template that we want. In this case, it's going to be a blog. We're going to install our packages and then create a new git repository and then select how strict we want our TypeScript checker to be. And then we're ready to go. So just go into the project and type npm run dev to get the project running on a local dev server. As you can see, this is a completely static, bare-bones blog with a few different pages and components that are already created for us by the template. Let's take a look at what the code looks like that makes this work. In the blog starter template, we get a folder structure that looks like this, which includes the components, layouts, and pages folders. Each file in the pages folder is just a page which you can navigate to in your browser. A layout is what you can use to wrap around your components to form a page. And finally, each component is a piece of code that defines an individual part of the UI in our application. If we navigate to our index.astro file, which is the root page on our website, you will notice all of our JavaScript goes between these three dashes at the top, and the rest of our markup is below that in a format quite similar to JSX if you're familiar with React. Coming to the blog page, you will notice we're importing all the blog files using astro.glob and then sorting them using the publish date. Down below, we can map over each blog and render a link to the URL of the page. Inside the blog folder, we have our markdown files. Built-in support for markdown rendering is an amazing feature of Astro which makes it super easy to create blogs or marketing pages. At the top between the dashes, you can pass your front matter, which is just any metadata related to the blog, like the title, author, and so on, and the rest of the file contains our content. If you create an MDX file though, something really cool that you can do is directly import and use your UI components from React, Vue, or any other supported library. Note that we're linking to a layout file. This file defines how our markdown looks and what functionality it has as it wraps around each markdown file that we link it to. We define the front matter of our markdown as props, fetch our images from the assets folder for each blog if they exist, and then use the built-in image component to render it with optimization. We can also show other front matter data here, like the publish date or the upload date. The slot tag here is how you can pass data to an Astro component as children. Just to give you a better idea, we usually do this exact thing in React using props.children. If you go to the header component, you will find we are passing the title of our link between the tags as children, which we can access with slot in our header link component. Astro is smart enough to automatically pass the body of our content to the slot tag in the layout file if we specify it in our front matter. In the config file, you can add or remove integrations. This is like a superpower because you can use this to easily write code in UI libraries like React, Solid, Vue, etc. in the same project or make use of things like Tailwind for styling. Now let's head over to deployment. First, we'll create a GitHub repository and push all of our code there. We will not only use this repository to track our code and integrate continuous deployment through Netlify, but it will also act as a storage for our blogs. So let's do that quickly by initializing a new repository by following the instructions and push our code. Then we need to host our site on Netlify. So after creating an account, we can click the add new site from an existing project and then connect our GitHub repository. If your repository doesn't show, make sure you have given Netlify the correct access. For our case, all of these build settings are configured correctly already. Simply click deploy site and once it finishes deploying and building your project, your website will be live on the randomly generated domain right at the top. Now we can simply continue using this blog by writing all of our blogs in raw markdown format, but that can get quite boring and annoying. So what if you want to use a rich text editor, allow guests to post blogs, or have a way to save and review posts before publishing them? Now these are all common features of a content management system and this is where Netlify CMS comes in. It provides us with an intuitive user interface that has all the above features and leverages GitHub to store and update our posts so that we don't even need a database or any storage system. If we go into the documentation and head into add to your site, you can find instructions to integrate it. Since there is no template or platform guide for Astro, we can follow the custom integration method and add the required files manually. Firstly, we need to add an admin folder in our public directory with index.html and config.yml inside it. Then. We can copy the contents of index.html into the file that we've created. This will use a CDN to load the package that generates our CMS dashboard. 
Then we can start populating our config file with the required values. First off, we need to add git gateway with our branch, which is main in this case. This allows Netlify to push commits to a repository, which means anyone that has access to write blogs on our site can push them as commits. Next, we can set the publish mode to editorial workflow, which will enable us to save our posts as drafts and review them before publishing. After this, we need to specify the folders where our CMS can access our assets, like featured images, both in our repository and also in our disk folder, which is created after building the app. In this case, it's going to be source slash assets for our media folder and slash assets for our public folder. Now that that's done, we can create our collections which define the data structures of our content on the CMS. We will specify the name of the route blog and the label to be used in the dashboard. Our folder will specify where our markdown files are stored. Create should be true so users can write new blogs and I'm going to remove the date from our slug to keep it simple. A slug is what is used by the CMS to create browser-friendly links using our post title. We can define our contents data right here. We'll add the route to our Astro layout file, the title, description, publish date, hero image, and then our body. Looking at the parameters we have, label is the text which Netlify CMS will use to title our field. Name is going to be the same variable names you have in your markdown front matter, and the widget is used to define the type of data so the editor can correctly show us the correct widget for each data type. Now we need a way for any authenticated user to log into our CMS and be able to write a post. For this, we can use Netlify's identity service. Setting it up is straightforward. On Netlify, go to identity, enable identity, then you can go to the registration section in settings and set the preference to invite only so that the CMS is not open to the public. We can add an external provider like GitHub or Google which you can use to log in. Finally, go into services and enable Git Gateway. This is the service I mentioned earlier that's going to enable Netlify to push commits to our repository. To make identity work and be able to do things on our front end, we need to copy the script import for Netlify identity widget and paste it into our newly created index.html in our admin folder as well as the index.astro page that we already had. And to redirect our authenticated users correctly once they are able to log in, we need to add this piece of logic at the bottom of our index.astro file as well. And since it's using TypeScript, we can directly cast the window object or declare a global to override the Netlify identity type to be any. We can also set the user to be any. Now we're done with coding. So push your changes to GitHub and that's going to trigger a new Netlify build. Go to your deployment URL once that's done, but add a slash admin at the end and that's going to take you to this login page. You can log in with whichever method you selected previously. Just to mention, you can also invite other users or your friends through their email address in the identity dashboard so that anyone you want can access the admin panel and write blog posts on your website. After login, you can see all the existing posts here. You can click a post to edit it or create a new blog. All of the fields will appear with the data types and widgets that are defined in our config.yaml file and we can start populating those straight away. We can select an existing image from the assets folder or upload a new one as well. As you can see, you can write the body of the post in rich text, which is something a lot of people are familiar with. So you, or anyone you give access to, can easily write posts without any knowledge of Markdown. And once you are done writing your post, you can save it and then update its status to ready. And when you are ready to publish, you can hit the publish button. This is going to do two things. Push a new commit with the Markdown of the blog you created, and that's going to create and automatically trigger a new build on Netlify. Once that's done, you can go to your deployment URL and you can check out your website. And that's it, your new blog is ready to view by everyone on the internet. I'll be coming up with a new video where I customize this blog fully with Tailwind CSS and add features like categories, search, pagination and more in the future. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next one.